class. This video is for class 7 social science and this is the continuation of the previous video. So we have already started with the new chapter that is the Mughal Empire. So let's continue. In the previous video we have discussed about the, the reign of uh, your Akbar, Humayu and all. So now let's discuss about Akbar. So after the reign of Humayu, uh, his son Akbar became the ruler. He has the throne, right? So he has the throne in the internet business. But when he uh, has the throne, he was very, very uh, small child. He was only 13 years old, right? So he was not able to take the youth responsibility. So on behalf of him, okay, uh, uh, Baron Khan, who was the official of Mughal Empire, he acted as a regent. Okay, so he took the authority. Then, so when Akbar took a uh, coronation, okay, uh, in the place that is called Palamur, which is located in Punjab in 1856. So after the war, four years, he uh, he acted or he was like a tutorial, okay, means he doesn't have a real uh, authority in his hand, okay, he was just a nobody in the uh, in the empire, right? So actual uh, authority was on the hand of Baron Khan, right? So as soon as Akbar became a ruler, he has to face a, 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 a two important challenges, okay, that was the Afghan power and the Raj okay? Both of them was was been defeated in the previous uh, previous uh, rulers, okay, they were defeated by Babur and uh, uh, sorry, Umayyad, but uh, somehow they, uh, they managed or they reorganized to organize their army again, right? So, uh, the Afghan was uh, becoming powerful under, uh, under your Adil Shah, okay, right? So, he became more powerful and he planned, uh, he declared uh, sorry, Adil Shah, okay, uh, sorry, under uh, your Adil Shah, okay, your Umayyad, sorry, who was the one, okay, who was the official of Adil Shah, so he declared himself as the emperor of Delhi, okay, emperor of Delhi, and as he found that the political state um, of Mughal Empire was not so strong, isn't it, as the emperor was a small child, isn't it, so he took that contest and he declared himself as the emperor, right, but there was Bairam Khan also, isn't it, who was, uh, who was maintaining, who was looking for the administration and all, okay, so he challenged the force of Afghan, okay, Afghan, and in the, uh, in the second battle of Panipat, okay, which was the historic battle, okay, after the first battle of Panipat, the battle was built for between Himu and Bairam Khan, right, so in that battle, Himu was totally defeated, okay, by Bairam Khan, okay, though the uh, military power of Afghan was more powerful as compared to Bairam Khan, okay, but the, but uh, your, uh, sorry, Bairam Khan was a good administrator, okay, he has got a good, um, uh, sorry, strategy and all, okay, so he was, uh, uh, he was succeeded the, um, succeeded the battle, okay, so, now that is the thing, isn't it, so we are going to find the more information about, uh, about, uh, Akbar and his reign, okay, uh, from the resource, okay, from the source, sorry, from the source, uh, that is your Akbar Nama, which has been written by the court poet of Akbar, his name was Akbar Fajr, right? So, this Akbar Nama has been divided into three volumes, okay, in the first volume, uh, for, in the first volume, we are going to find, we are going to know the detailed information about Akbar's ancestry, okay, so how, when, what he was originated, okay, what was his history, okay, we are going to find out in this, in the first volume, in the second volume, okay, it has discussed about the important events during the time of Akbar reign and in the third volume, okay, that is any Akbar day, okay, in that volume you are going to find uh, about the administrative structure during Akbar's reign, okay, apart from Abul Fajr, okay, your Badawi also has written the book, okay, that is called your Mutafa Ud Tawari, okay, which was written by Badawi, okay, okay, so Akbar as, as he grew, grew up, okay, he uh, he took the control, okay, over his kingdom, and soon after he became, he, uh, so he uh, became a real uh, emperor of his empire, okay, he took the policy, or he adopted the policy of conquest, okay, so he wanted to expand the territories by the policy of conquest, okay, so his territory expansion, okay, first one in central India, okay, he wanted to expand the territory towards the central India also, okay, so if you take a one, he attacked Mamba, okay, at that time, Bas Bahadur was the ruler in Mamba, okay, but he could not resist the force of Mughal Empire, so he just played away, okay, and easily Mughal Empire took the, uh, so the empire of, sorry, sorry, annex, uh, Mughal Empire, okay, then just after three years, okay, 
that is a feature known as 64. Uh, ये ऐसे क्योंकि ये ऐसे गोंदावना which is located in the southern part of the गोंदावना. At that time, Queen Durgavati was ruling over there. Okay, she was ruling as a regent. Okay, on behalf of her son. Okay, right. And she was a strong woman. Okay, and he, she uh, took the challenge of Mughal Empire. And uh, she fought very bravely also. Okay, but unfortunately, she was been defeated in the battle and was been uh, was been killed. Okay, and next, right? Okay, 1572, uh, Akbar conquered Gujarat. Okay, and easily he captured the part of Gujarat. Okay, then after that, okay, that was the next thing. Now, the main threat or the yeah, main threat of uh, Mughal was facing was the Raj Kutsbah. Okay, so initially in the, uh, in the previous part, also in the previous uh, ruler also, uh, the rulers had faced many problems uh, from the Raj Kutsbah, isn't it? So here also during the time of Akbar, okay, Raj Kutsbah was the real threat for them. So now he thought to solve the, pro solve the problem or solve the threat permanently, okay. So he wanted uh, a good relationship with the uh, with the Rajput Sanam. Okay, so he adopted various alliances with them. Okay, so some of the alliances are like he offered alliances. Okay, right. First one was Rajput leaders were offered post in administration and military uh, military system. Okay, so um, uh, sorry, so uh, Akbar decided to offer okay uh, offer a good position or uh, position for the Rajput Okay, in his military and administrative system. Then next, he adopted matrimonial policies. Okay, so in the matrimonial policy, he was going to uh, marry the daughter of um, some rulers. Okay, and in return that, uh, there will be a kind of good lesson and obviously there will be no any pattern between the two places, isn't it? So here also, he adopted the same policy. Okay, and uh, one more so of Amir, okay, he had a son, so he has a daughter. So, uh, Akbar got married with the daughter of Bakr. Okay, so now after that, there was a good relationship between uh, Amir and uh, Mughal Empire. Then after that, religion control over kingdoms. Okay, so he, whichever uh, kingdom was, has was been annexed by Mughal Empire, okay, that was been given back to the ruler. Okay, so he told uh, them to rule the country, sorry, to, uh, rule the state. Okay. But uh, first, they were going to help them to reorganize or make the Mughal Empire strong. Okay, so these all policies helped a lot for Akbar to maintain a good relationship with the Rasputanas. Okay, for a long time there was no any kind of battle or any kind of uh, any kind of uh, war between the uh, between Mughal and Rasputanas. Okay, so plus the Rasputanas also helped a lot for the expansion of uh, Mughal territory. Okay. So yes, uh, those are all the last ones, okay, doesn't mean that all the last ones accepted the proposal, okay. But there was uh, some uh, last ones who did not accept the proposal of Akbar, okay, and there was a conflict between them, right. So some of the, uh, some of the states uh, like your Royal Mumford and Jodhapur, Jodhapur, okay, which, uh, which these states or which this region didn't accept uh, any alliance uh, from, uh, from which was being put forward by the by Akbar, okay, so they refused the proposal. Then a strong opposition was been faced by uh, was faced by Akbar was your Udesi, who okay? was the uh, was the uh, ruler of Rana of Mehman, okay. So plus he also rejected the matrimonial policies also of Akbar, okay. Then there uh, then there was a uh, war or there was a pattern between the uh, between Udesi and um, I'm sorry, Uday Singh and your Akbar, okay? So it continued, okay? Uh, after that, uh, Uday Singh, okay? After Uday Singh, the death of Uday Singh, okay? His son, Rana Pratap, Rana Pratap Singh, okay? He continued the conflict between Mughal Empire and Rasmus, okay? So he had made a strong army, he regained the power, okay? So that they can, he can face the army of Mughal Empire, right? But unfortunately, okay, he was been uh, defeated in the battle of Haldigar in 1576, okay. Until the next, okay, uh, Akbar was finding very difficult to defeat Rana Pratap Singh, okay, because he has got a good uh, strategy, okay, and plus he has managed a good uh, military power also, okay. Until the next, Raja Man Singh, okay, who was, who became the general of Mughal Empire, okay, after he became the general of Mughal Empire, suddenly the battle was changed, okay? The whole scenario of uh, battle was been changed, okay? And finally, uh, Rana Pratap Singh was defeated.
put it in the pattern of Aldegar, okay? And he fled away somewhere in the mountain region, okay? But later still also he continued, okay, Rajput didn't give up, okay? So they still uh, tried to regain the power and they wanted to capture or they have captured a part of Delhi and all. Okay, so that was the about the Rajputs, okay? Now apart from that, there were other countries or other, other war also, uh, sorry, other countries was, um, was happened between Akbar, okay? So, some of the conquests was your Gujarat, okay? Gujarat, which was in Atta already, okay? Gujarat was, uh, was captured by Mughal Empire in 1972, okay? So, after that, uh, Mughal Empire, okay, Akbar moved towards Bengal, okay, to the eastern region, okay? So, he easily, within a two years only, he captured Bengal and annexed, annexed into his territories. Then, after that, between 1585 and 1595, okay? He captured the most part of Western India, okay, and not the western part of India, that is Kabul, Kandar, Sindh, East Balochistan, and all. Okay, this all region was being captured by Akbar. Now, next after that, okay, he expanded to uh, his territory towards the Deccan region. Okay, so now uh, when he moved towards the Deccan region, already has cleared all the challenges uh, in the northern part, okay, of India. So. The states which was being captured by Akbar uh, between 1590 to 1961 was your Ahmedabad, Birod, Tandesana. Okay, so these all states or these all regions came to under Mughal Empire. So if you see the whole array okay, of Akbar, then you can see he has adopted the Congress policy, isn't it? So uh, plus he has made his his art his uh, whole administration so strong, okay, so powerful. Okay. His upcoming successor will also find very easy, okay, and first they adopted the same policy which was uh, which was uh, done, which has been accepted by Akbar, um, okay, right? So till the, his end, okay, so till his death, okay, he has he has made his empire from from Himalayas to Godavari, okay, and from your uh, Hindu coast to uh, Brahmaputra, okay. So it was like uh, he has made Jangi, okay. So Jangi is the fourth ruler or fourth emperor of Mughal Emperor. Uh, before Akbar died, okay, he already has nominated his son Jahangir as his successor. Okay, so after the death of um, of Akbar in 1605, okay, Jahangir as the throne as an emperor. So his actual name is Nasruddin Salim. Okay, right? He has got the name of Salim. Okay, Akbar has given the name. Okay, as as uh, before Akbar, Akbar he didn't have any son. Okay, so he, when he visited to uh, sorry the the Dada, Okay, son of Christi. So he had prayed for a son. So after that, he has got the son. So that's why he has given name him as Salim. Okay, Nasruddin Salim. So after Jahangir became a uh, uh, became emperor, okay, he entitled himself as a Jahangir. Okay, he adopted the title that is Jahangir. Okay, which means the number of the four. Right. So we are going to know about the, the all information about Jahangir. This whole reign. Okay, about from his own autobiography that is here. That the age of Right? So he has given, uh, he has written the autobiography. So, Jangi also, okay, he also has adopted the same policy that his father, okay, he was very, very benevolent. Plus, he also uh, was tolerant towards the religious, okay. Since we know that in India at that time was a various religions like there was Hindu, uh, Muslim and all, okay. So he was tolerant with the uh, Hindu religions also, right. So, he was able to suppress the power of Rajput, okay, who was our foreign ruling in Mewar, okay, Rana in Mewar, he was succeeded to suppress that power also. And next is married Jaha, Nur Jaha, okay, he has married Nur Jaha. So, uh, Nur Jaha has a very important impact in his life, okay. So, Nur Jaha was not only the, uh, not only wife of uh, Jahangir, okay, but uh, she also looked after the administration system of Jahangir and wife. Right? So, she used to give a land grant to the others also. Plus, in the coin, okay, plus uh, the coin which was issued by Noor Jaha, in that coin, okay, see, in one side was Noor uh, picture and on the side was Jaha. Okay? So, that was, that shows that almost uh, influence she has made in the life of Jaha. Okay? So, uh, <coughs> apart from that, okay, Noor Jaha's is all traits, okay, his father, his brother, they all had a good position in uh, in uh, Mughal Empire's court, okay, he has a good power, sorry, they have got a good power, okay, so that's why it's also so that she has, she has got a uh, 
good influence or very good impact in uh, junkies uh, life. Okay, that that is good. So that was the thing. Then after that, what happened? Jur Nurja Hasi got one. Okay, the eldest son of uh, Jahangir. Okay, his name was Prince Kushru. Okay, Kushru. Okay, he don't want him to become a ruler or successor of the Jahangir. Okay. Why uh, there was no good relationship between Nur Jahan and Prince Kushan, right? So, but after a few years, uh, Nur Jahan she resigned from her post. Okay, she just uh, did uh, she didn't interfere anymore in the internal affairs of the empire. Then later on, Prince Kushan became the emperor after his father's death, right? So during the time of uh, Jahangir, okay, the two uh, ambassador from East India Company has came to India. Okay, that was. Sir uh, Hawkins Willem and Sir Willem Hawkins and Sir Thomas Crowe. Okay, so they were being laid. Okay, Jahangir laid them to do to set up a factory in Surat. Okay, and to do the trading with uh, with uh, India. Okay, so that was the thing. Then after that, okay, he uh, for whole life, okay, Jahangir adopted the uh, adopted his father's policy, that is, Akbar's policy. Okay, he didn't make any modification in the policies and all. Okay, right, and he was a very good and benevolent ruler as.